Hi YouTube, welcome to part 2 of 2 of my advanced Photopia tutorial in Stable Diffusion. This time we're going to go over blending and how to create text effects and how to add textures to your text as well as how to add shadows and lighting so your text doesn't look so flat and lifeless. And we're going to do a little bit more with cloning and texture transfers just for fun. And um, now I'm not going to be describing every tool like I did in the first tutorial. So if you want to go ahead and watch that video, I'm going to leave it in the video description. It will also go over the installation process for Photopia in Stable Diffusion. So if you want to go check that out, that's in the video description. With that being said let's get started all right just a heads up i'm going to be going a little bit faster i'm not going to explain every tool so go ahead and watch that first video if you're you're kind of lost or pause if needed but if you watch the first video you might have remembered me saying that you can use one trick for multiple purposes so i'm going to show that right now so if you remember the eye colorization technique we use a kind of hue blend and then change the color so we're going to do the same thing but we're going to change the color of the sky and we're going to do multiple things so i'm going to start with this desert photo right here and so let me go ahead and get to a good position I'm going to select this magic tool, then I'm going to click here right in the middle and just kind of just drag down until it covers the sky. All right, so the mass is covering the sky now. So I use the magic tool to do that pretty easily. So go to layer, go to new fill layer, then color fill. If you remember, this is the same exact thing we did for the eye. We're just doing it for something else. So I'm going to change it to red and click OK. And now you can definitely see where the mask is with that dark color red. So now we're going to select the blend mode here and scroll down to hue. Now we have a hue instead of a solid color. Now go ahead and double click on that color color box and we could change it to something that's a little bit more natural that we like. So here we go. Purple. I mean, purple is not natural, but it looks cool. So we're going to stick with it. And by the way, if you click on this web colors, you get a little bit more variability. So it's a little easier to work with. I like that. So I'm going to click OK. And just like that, we have a purple sky. And this is what it looked like before. This is what it looks like now. So you can create these kind of fantasy landscapes. And as you can see, a little bit of the tips here were kind of selected. So using that same kind of technique we did with a non-destructive edits, we can just click on the mask, select our brush tool, make sure you change the brush size, and then let's go ahead and just kind of draw this out using the black coloring. So white will actually do the opposite. So if you use white, it's going to start drawing purple around the map here. We don't want that. So we're going to go back and switch it to black by clicking on this arrow. And then you can fine tune and erase things that you don't want. All right. So I think that's good enough. Um, this doesn't need to be perfect. You get the idea. And if you zoom this close, you can get a perfect line around your subject. No problem. Now I'm just going to merge these two photos. I'm going to click shift and click on the top one with the color mask. And I'm going to click on the desert one and then, and then right click and choose merge layers. That's just another way to apply the layer as well. Okay. So we have this picture, right? And now I'm going to drag a different picture on top and let's take a look at the gradient tool. So let's click on that. And then we're going to add a mask to this by clicking over here. And I kept calling it vector mask. My bad. It's it's an, it's a raster mask. If you click it one more time, it's a vector mask, which does something else. So now we have our raster mask and we click the gradient tool, which is this thing right here. You can also press G to access it. And now when you drag the gradient tool across, you can see here it gradiently brings the other picture through. I mean, this doesn't look nice in this picture, but you can kind of use your imagination what you can use this for in your other in other photos. And it's that simple. I mean, just like that, we were able to do this. And similar to how we brought textures through in the previous tutorial, you can actually just kind of click on the brush here, choose your brush size and select the color black to bring in the bottom photo here. Okay, now that we effectively ruined this photo, let's try to color something else. All right, so now I have this room here and I want to color the walls without actually just painting over it and destroying it. So I'm going to click the rectangle select tool, which you can press M to do that. Click in the corner here and I'm, and I'm just going to drag a square right across the photo and then up and then let go. And you can see where it's selected and do the same thing again and click on layer, new layer, fill color, fill. I'm going to make it red. Click OK. See that red mass solid color. So I'm going to blend it in by going into the blending and clicking on hue. And you can see the walls are a different color. The cool thing about this is you can see that the lighting actually is still there. So it looks like it was naturally in the photo. And this is just a pink room. Now you do see this hard line here. So we're going to fix that real quick. So just like we did in our last one, we were bringing textures through and erasing them. Just go ahead and select your brush and make sure you're on the color. I think for this will be color black and make sure you're on the mask itself, not the, the color box. So click on the mask and just go ahead and erase this. Don't be afraid to let go of the left click and um just kind of color again, because if you do it too long and then you make a mess up here, like the whole thing, you have to redo and go back. So just do a small portion, let go, do a small portion, let go of left click, just do it in small batches. All right. So that looks good, but I don't like the color. So I'm going to click on the color box here, double click on that. And I'm going to change it to probably maybe this color right here is like teal blue color. So, okay, we'll just use that. But yeah, so that works out. And there's a few places I need to clean up here. 
All right, got it. All right, that's cool. But what if we just wanted to do like a gradient fill just to make it look like it's coming from a light source where it kind of fades in. So just go ahead and click on the gradient tool or press G, drag it down here from the light. And as you can see, it looks like it's coming from the light now rather than the walls being painted. And you can see this kind of gradient effect here. And the longer you drag the gradient toolbar, the longer it's gonna cast the shadow or cast the light actually. Cast the color? I don't know. All right, so let's bring in the photo we worked on from part one and play with it a little bit. So this is the photo right here. Now, before I do anything, I'm actually going to right click on the top photo here, which is the photo of the girl. And then I'm going to duplicate that layer and then I'm going to bring it to the bottom here and rename it to backup. And then I'm going to hide it by clicking on the I button. It's always good just to have that when you need to bring it back. And I'm going to show you a few examples right now of why you would want that. Let's say I want to add some additional clouds over here. So I'm going to actually grab a copy of the backup here. I'm going to duplicate a layer and put it right under the one named color fill. And then I'm going to unhide it. Now I'm going to click on color fill. And now I'm going to lower the opacity of the top one to 30%. So 30% so we could kind of see both images here. And now I'm going to drag it a little bit down so we could get some of the clouds here. Now I'm changing the opacity back to 100%. And then I'm just going to blend over there by using the brush tool and the color black so brush tool you can press b for the brush tool and then just oh sorry okay so i forgot to add the mask so go back to color fill click on that and then add the mask make sure you're inside the mask and then just start painting in the clouds here so we have some additional clouds so you can do this to add more hair to add some fixes to clothes and get the same texture i mean there's other ways to do it you can also use the blend tool but let me fix this i'm gonna swap the color to white that is so awesome non-destructive edits pretty awesome and then you could do the same technique again wherever you need it to be now I think I need it here for some texture. So we can use this for a texture. Technically, you can use the heal tool by right clicking on this healing brush. And then you can just hold alt and click somewhere near the subject and then just start cleaning up. But then you could see if you look really closely, you could see a little bit, a bit too much cleanness, but it looks pretty good. I mean, it's hard to tell, right? Especially when you zoom out, you probably couldn't tell. Actually, I can't tell. I don't know. It looks pretty good. All right. So let's play with the cloning tool again for a little bit here. Go ahead and click on the stamper icon right here for the clone tool or press B. And then now make sure you're on the top layer here you want to be on that and then change your brush size um so this is tiny but let's uh just alt and then press click right in the middle of the orb to capture the orb and clone it first i mean right now it's tiny but it's easier to kind of find the correct size when you could see what you're working with so this is actually the right size now i'm going to put one right here put one right here one right here put one right here all right if you didn't know i'm trying to recreate the thumbnail i used in the first video now let's press alt and k over the sun here or moon or whatever it is and lower the size of it instead of just cloning it like that right there we're actually going to change the blending mode to saturation so let's do that right now saturation put it like this right here and as you can see it kind of looks like a like an eclipse and so it gives a nice effect and so saturation kind of pulls from the picture so if i put it on this side you can see it has a more purple effect and we're going to put another moon right next to this moon right here we're going to scroll right in you can see it looks very out of place it doesn't look like it's blending at all so let's make a copy of the backup down here duplicate the layer and drag it under our top layer all right so just go ahead and create that mask by clicking the top layer then clicking on add raster mask the square with the circle inside and now we're gonna make sure the flow is low so 30 is pretty low so we're just gonna blend around the edges here and we're gonna make it look like it's being absorbed by the clouds here so that blends a lot better to see what it looks like without it just disable the raster mask and you could see it's like that and i'm gonna enable it again and then i'm gonna right click and apply it so now we blended this moon into the background and we added a little saturated clips here for that one and we created some orbs here so a little bit of change here so let's hide the things that we did all right so now let's really mess up the photo so i'm gonna so i'm gonna hold shift and click on the top two layers and then i'm gonna right click on it and merge those layers now underneath is my galaxy and i made this in stable diffusion with like three keywords just colorful galaxy vibrant nothing special so i'm gonna actually click on that to so i can see both of the top layers remember the bottom one's just a, a backup so it should always be hidden now i'm gonna set the opacity to about 80 and then i'm gonna put the flow i think flow 30 or 40 maybe Smoothness, 10%, whatever. And then I'm gonna make a bigger brush. And guess what? I'm gonna do another mask. There we go. It's gonna be a big part of your journey here. So just go ahead and start coloring in. So, I mean, look at how crazy that is. Look at this. Look at how much that changes the photo. So that you could see it's kind of blending in and going behind the actual stars and galaxy so i mean that already looks nice right there so let's do it over here as well so i'm in here don't worry about getting onto the character 
whether you want to or not. You could always come back in. This is non-destructive editing. So just swap the colors, swap it to white now. Just go back and just clean it up. I don't want it completely gone. I think it looks kind of cool. I'm gonna swap back to black and fill in these areas here. All right, so that looks pretty good. So let's add that colorization technique. Let's see if that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and split the photo right here on this side of the face. Now we have a rectangle over her. So now I'm gonna go to layer, new fill, color fill. I'm going to change it to red and you can see that big block of red. Now I'm going to click on the blend and then click on hue. So that looks cool. The red, see what other colors we have here. Blue looks pretty dreamy. The purple looks cool. So I'm going to go with maybe green, greenish blue. This one, this one's pretty cool. So I'm going to click OK. So that one looks pretty cool. It's like dreamy. And now let's do the same thing to the other side, but a different color. So I chose like a purple pinkish color and that looks pretty good, except there's a hard line here and you're going to see in a second why I overlap. Let's go ahead and press B. And with a very low, like 20% flow, we're just going to go ahead and color over this section and just kind of blend it nicely. It's right down the middle. Just get rid of that line until you achieve the effect that you're looking for. All right. So that came out nicely. You can see the moon that I hid behind the shadows here. And these are hidden behind the vortex and everything. It doesn't look as nice because I kind of wanted to show this effect and create a different thumbnail this time. Okay. So I think that looks good. So I'm going to actually select all of them by holding shift and clicking on every single one. And I'm just going to right click and merge them. So now this is a single picture. All right, so I created this image here of the Star Wars Death Star. Let's go ahead and send this to Photopia right here by clicking on that button and then put it somewhere here. Maybe perhaps right here, maybe right here. And let's right click on the image somewhere and it's not showing me. So if you can't find something like right now, I can't find the tool I'm looking for. I'll just click on search and type it in. So I'm going to type in remove BG and click on that. And just like that, the background was removed from this. And so I'm just going to put it right here in the corner. But I need to resize it a little bit. So I'm going to go to edit and then go to free transform and then I'm going to just make it smaller. And, and if you hold shift while you do that, it'll actually stretch it if you want it stretched. You want such a thing. All right. So now I just need to blend it in. I'll probably go 50% for this and just kind of paint over it. All right. It's kind of hidden right there. All right. So let's have a little fun with the picture. So I'm going to go to file and open the picture that we were working on. But if you want to add a second picture to the layers, you actually have to go open and place. If you just open it up regularly, it's going to have its own tab up here. Then you're going to have to do some additional work to get it in here. Okay. So we're going to add wings to this model. I couldn't find an angel. I didn't want to look too hard. So I got this duck right here and I got it from pexels.com, which is a royalty free website. Look at this glorious duck. Hi, Mr. Duck. All right, so I'm going to select the lasso tool or you can press L and I'm going to cut off his wing from right here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but zoom in as close as you can. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to clean it up just a little bit and we don't have to clean it up too much. Cool. I got a chicken wing. So let's um, cut it off. Go to edit and then cut. Select cut. It says I have to rasterize it first. So you got to right click on the actual layer, rasterize, and then go to edit again and then cut. And you could see it made a hole, <laughs> made a hole. And so you could see what's in the bottom here. So now I'm going to click inside the layers and then paste it right there. So now we have that wing. So if you hide the duck, we got this. So let's hide everything except the wing and clean it up. So we're just going to use this magic select tool and go in between and press delete. Sometimes when you're lucky, you'll get it all in one shot. Just try to get rid of as much as you can. If you get stuck with this tool, just go ahead and click on the lasso tool and just click on the canvas anywhere. Then go back to the magic tool. You'll find out that it's a bit sticky. All right, so that's it for that tool. And we're going to go ahead and click on the eraser now and just kind of fine tune it. All right, we got a duck wing or a chicken wing. That's a nice wing, actually. Now let's right click on the layer and then click on duplicate layer because we're going to need two wings, right? Go ahead and press V to use the select tool and then let's flip one of these wings. So we're going to flip this one by clicking on it, edit, transform, and then go to flip horizontally. So now we have two wings. Awesome. So now we can get rid of the duck photo. We, we got what we want from it. So bye duck. So I'm going to erase that and delete that. And we're going to put, we're going to unhide the background image, our main image. And then we're going to actually put the wings on her right here as best we can. And you can see they're kind of small now. So you want them a little bit bigger. So go ahead and click on the wing you want to edit. So we're on the top one right now. Click on edit, free transform. And then we could actually enlarge the wing and you could actually click somewhere here on the edges, not on the line, but right outside the box. And you could rotate the wing or whatever object you're working on. You could also hold shift. And when you're on the edges pulling it, you can actually stretch it in different directions. I'm going to stretch it like this, rotate it like this. And don't worry if it crosses kind of her body. We're going to fix that later. So now I got to do the other side. So don't click on the wing itself. Click on the layer to work on it. Now that I have it where I want it and the size I want it to be, I'm actually going to click on both of the wing layers by 
holding shift, clicking on that top one, then the middle one, right click and merge. I want them to be one object. So now they're moving at the same time. And now I'm going to make a copy of the background image, which is the bottom one or the main image. Right click on it, duplicate layer. I'm going to make a little sandwich here, image sandwich. So we have the wings in the middle. We want this because we need a floor. If we start painting in a mass, it's going to make holes and you're going to see the bottom of the canvas. So we're going to prevent that. And we're even going to be able to blend using the background, this one right here as a floor. So I'm going to name this one the floor and I'm going to name the middle one lettuce and tomatoes. Oh God, I can't spell tomatoes. Lettuce and ham. Don't ask questions. All right. So the top is going to be top layer. Now let's bring those wings in. So I'm going to click on the brush tool, click on the color black here on the foreground. And then I'm going to add a mask by adding the raster mask. Make sure you're inside the gray box or white box, whatever you have. Cool. I'm just going to paint in the wings just like that. And I, I know you're like, that looks terrible, right? But don't worry about it. We're going to switch back to white and try to get rid of the ones that are kind of creeping over her shoulder right here right here. All right. So that looks nice ish, but let's lower the flow to about 10 and then the opacity to about 50 ish. And then we're going to select the white and just kind of blend in the sides. Just get the edges so it blends into the photo and don't do it too. Oh, don't overdo it. Just want the tips. Tip. All right. So that already looks pretty nice, but it still doesn't look like part of the picture. So let's do something cool here. So let's select a different blend. Let's go click on this right here. Actually click on the, the wings first and then select the drop down here. And there's multiple ways we can blend this. So you can do a luminosity blend. And you can see here, it kind of picks up a lot of the colors as well. So that one looks pretty nice. You can also do the subtract, so it looks pretty edgy. You can do soft light or a soft dodge, or was it linear dodge? So it looks kind of ethereal, luminosity. And actually, I'm going to do an overlay. Overlay always does a pretty good job. And you can see here, the overlay makes it look like it's part of the picture and that it's in the background. Then we're going to select the ELF here and then select the drop shadow. We're going to add a little bit of shadow to it. So. You can increase the shadow and the distance as well. And the cool thing is you can actually grab the shadow right here and you can move the shadow around. I think that's enough for a shadow. We don't want anything too crazy. You probably couldn't even tell this is a wing of a duck. It just looks like angel wings to me. So I'm going to click on this sandwich here. So the top layer, the middle and the bottom by holding shift and clicking on each one and then right click and merge. So they're all one picture now. And I just want to remind you, this is what it was. So you look at this picture here and this is a pretty good looking picture, but it looks very different from this picture. And so we added a lot of effects. All right. Very nice. Let's uh, create some text now. Very nice. How much? All right. So let's create this text here. So what I have here is some text that I created as well as three pictures. And these pictures are going to be used to serve as texture that goes on top of the text. So here I got a bunch of lasers. This next one, I got a bunch of flowers. And the last one, I got this rusty plate here. So these are all going to help me generate my images. So let's look at how to create text first. So to create text, just click on the T over here, or you can just press T and just click somewhere on here and then just type in something like, I don't know, Photopea. Now it's not going to be that big by default. This is actually bigger than the, the max. So when you go use the slider, you're going to get 150 for the max. It's no problem. Just go ahead and triple click in here, then type in like whatever size you want. And it'll be a lot bigger than what the max is. Keep in mind, you want text that's kind of fat that has a, you know, a canvas that you can actually put text on. So this would be a pretty good one right here. All right. So I don't need that layer. Let's get started. So the first one, I have this one that says instable diffusion and it's right on top of these lasers right here, but the lasers are a little too spread out. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink this picture. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I click on the image that I'm working on, which is the lasers here in the layers panel. And then I'm click on edit, free transform, and I'm going to shrink the lasers down. You can notice the aspect ratios are locked unless you hold shift. If you hold shift, you can make it whatever size you want. I actually want to do different fonts. So I'm going to go in here and click this one maybe. And I'm going to select this font right here and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. If you want to move both of these at the same time, you actually have to select both layers, be on the select tool and then click on it and move it. Otherwise you're going to split them apart. Cool. That's what I want. So I'm actually going to drag the picture on top of the text and then I'm just going to right click on the picture. And then when I click on clipping mask, it's going to absorb everything onto the text. So clicking it, there you go. So now it's on the text itself. You could also drag around the picture to your liking. So I'm going to keep it like that. Now I'm going to select both the text and the image it absorbed. And I'm going to right click and then select merge layers. And now it's just like one big purple 
stable diffusion thingy. It still looks kind of flat. So I'm going to click on the ELF or layer style down here. I'm going to give it, hmm, I'm going to give it an outer glow. Right now I got linear burn for my blend mode, but you can choose whatever you want. I just want a darker kind of glow. So I chose that. You notice the more you increase your noise, the more it looks like static here. All right. After messing with the settings, this is what I came up with. I mean, it looks okay. Let's stick with that. I think that looks fine. So I'm going to click on okay and we're going to keep that. So now let's take a look at advanced. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit here on layers. And I'm going to put the rusty image near the top. And of course, you got to enable them. This one, I'm just going to put wherever. So I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to swap the rusty photo on top. Right click on the rusty photo and clipping mask. Now I'm going to drag the, the rusty photo around in the background to see what's best here. I think the holes give it a nice effect. It's like cheese. All right, so I'm going to keep that. And then I'm going to select both layers by holding shift and clicking on each one and then merging them. And now I'm going to put it in the background. I'm going to drag it near the top here. And then I'm going to blend it differently. I'm going to put luminosity blend so it kind of absorbs the background here. And it looks more like the moon or space or a different type of metal. So I think that looks good right there. And then we have our other one, our stable diffusion one down here, which we can move. But let's actually give the advanced one a drop shadow. So click on the layer styles down here, which is the ELF button, and then go to drop shadow. And you can see the drop shadow already came in. The cool thing about this tool is that you can actually grab the shadow and move it around. So as you can see, I'm moving the shadow here above it and I can move it below it. I think, I think right there is pretty good. And now we're going to move to the Photopea one. So I'm going to hide these first, drag Photopea to the top with the flowers and now let's center it. So you might notice that this is not going to work because it's not going to fit. You could clone the same one right here. It's going to actually rasterize, sure. Or you can clone the different one, the new one right here. Don't worry about that hard line. You could blend it out or you know what you can do. You can actually use the heel tool right here and just kind of do a blend right here. It's not going to be perfect. It's good enough for this because we're just using this for text. So you won't even notice the difference. So I'm going to put it right there. And then now I'm going to drag the flowers on top, right click on the flowers and then clipping mask. And so that's our Photopea and we're going to put it into the photo and add all three of them. So again, you have to combine the photos before you can move them together. You can just select them both or you can just merge them, which I'm doing right now. So I can actually add some layer style to it. So now I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to give it a different style. So I'm actually going to go in here and do bevel and emboss. And so that's going to give it some sort of depth here and you can actually mess with this. So it's not so dark. It gives it a 3D effect, which is kind of cool. All right. So I think that looks good, but let's go ahead and add a drop shadow as well. So go back in, drop shadow, and I'm going to move it. All right. So that looks good. So it has a drop shadow. It has some embossing going on here and it doesn't look flat. So that's the most important part. And let's take a look at our thumbnail that we made and just compare it to what it was before and what it is now. So there's a lot of things that went in here. This was a journey and sorry, this is a long video, but I mean, it's it's hard to kind of like cut these kind of videos down. So if you look in the back, there's a death star and you see some of the stars and color from the galaxy background that we brought in, but we kind of covered it. And we did this two tone hue over here with the light blue and the pink or purple. Then we have this eclipse that we made here by cloning this moon and then using the saturation method. And we did another saturation here just to kind of compare how it absorbs colors. We added the wings, cleaned it up and did an overlay to make it look natural and part of the picture, which wasn't in the original picture. And then we cloned the orbs as well. So yeah, there's a lot going on here. So if you learn all these tricks, you can do a lot of things. As you can see, a lot of the tricks that I use um, um, they're just kind of the same trick being used in different ways. For example, you look at the eye color, that's the same trick as how we did the two-tone colors here, as well as how we painted the walls and did that gradient. It's all the same thing, as well as when we brought the wings in. That's just a texture transfer working between layers. I'm going to put links in the description so you can use the photos that I use to edit, if you want to do that, or you can make your own. All right, so here is our thumbnail that we're going to use for this video. Hope you liked the video. I'm sorry this one's kind of long. I'm trying to keep it under 13 minutes, but uh, if you liked the video, go ahead and click the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. It helps me a lot. And if you like AI art or all things AI, definitely check out my video description. I'm going to put some videos in there for you to watch, as well as the videos that show up at the end of this one. Or you can just subscribe. But definitely have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye.